Hi everybody, Penny here. Welcome to my kitchen. So of course, Caitlin is with me here today. And let's show the people your, your apron. Uncle Bert and Aunt Sherry sent this to Daddy. It's the sweetest chef, isn't he cute? Anyway, that's her apron for today. So today we are going to make a tortiere, which is basically a meat pie. Now the tortiere comes out of Quebec. So it's Canadian, French Canadian. Um, but of course there's meat pies in the traditions of Ireland, Scotland, England, but a large portion of um, Irish immigrants, particularly during the potato famine, uh, my understanding, um, ended up in Quebec, specifically Montreal. So Montreal has a huge Irish population, um, so it's no surprise that of course, you know, they wanted their comfort food. And this is traditionally cooked over Christmas, so, um, and I believe Christmas Eve. Not 100% about that, but I know it is traditionally done over Christmas. So, <clears throat> there's many, many different versions. You're okay. There's many, many different versions. This is my version. Um, and it was inspired by a lot of different recipes that I read. Um, in particular, one out of the Chatelaine, the Canadian Chatelaine magazine. Um, it's, it's a little different, but that's where the inspiration, main inspiration came from. So. You're going to need a couple of tablespoons of oil. We've got olive oil. You're going to need two pounds or two packages of ground beef. You're going to need a package of ground pork. You're going to need a large onion, finely diced. Um, you're going to need a stock of celery. I didn't do a stock of celery because I'm adding two optional vegetables, which is chopped mushrooms and frozen peas. So I just left out the celery. You're going to need one large carrot finely diced. Now I find if I don't pre-cook the carrot, um, it doesn't get soft enough within the pie. So I cook this in boiling water in the microwave for five minutes. They're perfect. You're also going to need, this is optional, um, four to six cloves of garlic. So I'm not putting any garlic in mine today, but you can, or you can use a little bit of garlic powder. Maybe that's what I'll do. Um, you're going to need one potato grated, which Caitlin did for us. Um, and you're going to need your spices. Now the spices that I'm using uh, is two teaspoons of savory, which is what we call it in Newfoundland. Um, in England, they call it summer savory. And sometimes you can find it here in Ontario in Mennonite markets and they call it summer savory. Now, if you don't have savory, if you don't like savory, you could use rosemary, you could use thyme, you could use oregano, you could use sage, which is very popular here in Ontario. But my version has two teaspoons of savory. And then we have one teaspoon of celery seed, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of powder, and a half teaspoon of ground cloves. So that's all the um, spices that go into this particular tortilla. And we also have one cup of beef broth. Now this is just the little cube one um, added with boiling water. Um, if you don't have beef broth, you could use water. If you don't have beef broth, but you've got chicken broth, I'd throw that in. Or you could even use a little bit of, of red wine. Then we have, um, of course, Worcester sauce that's gonna go on, on the meat. Then we have about a half a cup of breadcrumbs. Now, the only ones we could find at the grocery store today were breaded seasoned breadcrumbs <laughs> um, with Pecorino Romano cheese. And that's okay, that's just gonna add a little bit extra flavor, not to worry. You could make your own breadcrumbs from fresh bread, or you could use panko breadcrumbs, like whatever you have in the house, go for it. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is turn this on. And we'll put in a little bit of oil, just a little bit, not much. And then we're gonna throw in our onions. And our mushrooms. You wanna put those in, Caitlin? There you go. Put them all in, good job. Now, Caitlin chopped the mushrooms. And we're going to insert a video here of what a good job she did. Look at you go. Woohoo! 
Got your fingers. Awesome! So, while that is sauteing and getting nice and soft, uh, I'm going to douse our ground meats with lots of Worcester sauce. So it gets in the meat. Can I you want to come and help us? Not today. Yanni's watching. She's our Japanese student. And she, I've made this once while she's here and she loves it. But unfortunately, um, according to the rules and regulations for our international students, I'm not allowed to have them on my videos. Very sorry about that. But she loves this meat. Okay. So, Caitlin, can you stir that for me? Now, you don't have to get as complicated as this. You could easily just use beef. You could easily just use pork. But I'm using a combination of both because that's what I like. You could just chop up a carrot. You could just chop up an onion. You could use the dried flaked onions if you don't want to chop up an onion. Um, you don't have to put in all those spices. You don't have to put in the breadcrumbs. The purpose of the breadcrumbs and the potato is to thicken it up a little bit so that when you cut through the pie, um, it doesn't fall apart. Now, if you cut it as soon as it comes out of the oven, like any other pie, it, it is going to get all crumbly and whatever. So you need to let it rest for about 20 minutes to half an hour before you cut it open. Um, but I like it even better the next day. So you can make this the next day, let it cool, put it in the fridge, and then take it out about a half hour before you're going to serve it and have it at room temperature. Really, really, really nice. So if you did want to make this at some point over Christmas, you're having company over, or you're going to a potluck, be perfect because there's lots of preparation now, but then the day, please don't bang that, but then the day of, you don't have to worry about it. All the work is done. So it is going to take a few minutes for those mushrooms and onions to really wilt down and get nice and brown, particularly the mushrooms. Now you have, if you're going to use mushrooms, you have to use the fresh ones. The canned ones will not work because they will not give you that, what they call umami flavor. I really still don't know what umami means, but apparently Worcester sauce, mushrooms, things like that give you an umami flavor, which is supposedly good. So it's great. So we're going to let that saute away and we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, back again. So our mushrooms are starting to get nice and soft and our onions are starting to get nice and soft. Um, so we're going to add our meat. Just clear a little space in the middle of the pan. Worcester sauce and all. I'm going to lay that over there. And our brown pork. Worcester sauce and all. Oh. And okay. So now we're also going to add our spices. So I'm going to mix all those up like that. And we're going to go like this. Get them all mixed in there. And then Caitlin, do you think you could use this one? This is a meat masher. This one came from Pampered Chef. Um, but if you have a potato masher with bigger holes or whatever, you could use that. And it just breaks up the meat um, because it's really hard to do. I know for years, I just used to take a spoon and try and cut it up. That does a really, really, really good job. I also want to remind you about your scraps. Don't put your scraps in the garbage. So when you're peeling your carrot, peeling your potatoes, um, you know, the ends of your onions, the stems of your mushrooms, they are all in here. And then this goes in the freezer, and when you want to make a veggie stock or a chicken stock, then you don't have to go and peel an onion, a piece of celery, you know, whatever, a carrot to go in with the stock. You just use your scraps, and that goes in the freezer. So put that up in the freezer. So we are going to let this fry um, till it's nice and golden brown. And then we are going to add our carrots, our potatoes, our peas, and our broth. Then we're gonna let it simmer for maybe 20 minutes, a half an hour, until pretty much all of this broth has evaporated, which means, of course, the flavors are concentrated. And then Yanni told me while we were off camera what umami means. And it basically just means it tastes good. It's delicious. 
And I have to agree, Worcester sauce makes everything taste better. And so do mushrooms, I must say. However, like I said, if you don't like mushrooms, you don't have to put them. It's all good. So we're gonna let this fry up till it's nice and golden brown. And then we'll be back. Hi, back again. Okay, so we have our meat and our onions all fried up with our mushrooms and our spices. Looks great. So, Caitlin, would you like to put the carrots in? Now remember, the carrots were pre-cooked. You could either do them in the microwave like I did, or you can boil them on top of the stove. Totally up to you. Thank you very much. You wanna put the peas in? Using frozen peas, um, because tin peas are so soft that they would just go to mush in, uh, in this recipe. So that's why I use frozen peas. So mix all that up. And then we're going to add in our grated potato, just one potato, about a half a cup to one cup. And as this cooks down, those are pretty much going to disintegrate, but it will help to thicken the, the meat mixture for the pot. Good job. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to put in the one cup of our beef broth. There we go. Now, we're going to bring that up to a simmer, and then we're going to let it just gently evaporate the liquid, which is going to concentrate all the flavors for good umami. Japanese word means pretty delicious. Um, and then we'll be back. Hi everybody. Okay, so our mixture is lovely and it looks so good. So we're gonna turn off the heat and we're going to mix in our breadcrumbs. There we go, Caitlin. You're gonna take that away and mix in your breadcrumbs. Now, if you need more breadcrumbs because it still looks really, really wet, by all means, you can add some more. Um, but the potato will also um, soak up some of that moisture. But there's not a lot left there now anyway because uh, we simmered it all off. Okay, that looks amazing. Now, it's very hot, so be very careful. But we're going to put this all out on a cookie sheet. And I just have it lined with parchment paper for ease of cleanup. No other reason. You could use tin foil too if you wanted to. And we're going to spread that out. And the fan on the induction cooktop has stopped, so it's a little quieter. There we go. We're getting it all. Now, don't touch that because it's still hot, okay? So we're gonna spread this out on the cookie sheet. Now, if you had lots of time, you could just leave this out for about a half an hour or so, or you could lay it in the fridge, but I am going to put it in the freezer. As long as you have somewhere in the freezer where you can lay it relatively flat, then that's all you really need. Okay. And when this is cooled, we're going to put it in the pie shells and shell uh, and put it in the oven. So when it's cooled, preheat your oven to 400 and then we'll be back. Okay, so we're finally ready to assemble our pie. Now, once you have your meat mixture all cooled, at this point, like if you wanted to do this ahead of time, you could easily put this in a large freezer baggie, label it, of course, and pop it in the freezer. And then any time that you want to pull out your tortillere, you can easily make that. You could even put it in a pan if you wanted to, um, like a, a 7 by 11 or a 9 by 13, and then just roll out a sheet of puff pastry and put it in the oven like that. You could easily do it that way as well. But we're going to do it in a traditional pie. So I buy, I don't make pastry, I don't know why I don't make pastry. I don't enjoy making pastry. I don't know why I like eating pastry and I like baking other things, but for some reason pastry is like, why bother when you've got perfectly good stuff at the grocery store and it's lovely. Okay, so that's my rant for today. 
So I buy the pastry that you can roll out, not the one that is already shaped in a pie shape. Um, and because this is a meat pie, which is a heavy pie, I bought two boxes and there's two per box. So I'm going to combine two for the bottom and two for the top. So I've got a nice clean flat surface. I'm going to put on a little bit of flour so it doesn't stick. And then we're going to spread that out a little bit. Nothing serious. And then we're going to take our, our pie pastry and roll it out. Make sure you take this out of the fridge. I'd say a good 15, 20 minutes. It says it on the box um, before you go to use it um, so that it can be a little more pliable for you. There's the first one. There's the second one. So we're just gonna put these together. Now, if you just, if you like a thin crust, then by all means, just use one. But for this particular pie, I prefer to use a double crust. And I forgot my rolling pin, so I'll be right back. Okay, so got our rolling pin. Put a little bit of flour on it. And we're not gonna roll it. We don't wanna make it too much bigger, but we do want the two pieces of pastry to stick together. And this is really all you need to do. We do want it a little bigger than our nine inch deep dish pie pan because we want it to hang out over the sides. So we can roll it up, get our pie pan, and then roll it out. And we can fit it, tuck it nicely down into our pan. Make sure it all comes out over the sides. There we go. There we go. Make sure it all tucks in there quite nicely. There we go. Now, when you trim off the edge, you don't want to trim it this way because as it cooks, the pie pastry is going to shrink. Okay, so when you trim off the edge, you want to trim it this way, just underneath. But we're going to do that in just a minute, but I wanted to say that before I forgot. Okay, so now we get to put our pie filling in our pot. It's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. We don't need any flour or anything like that in the bottom because we've already got our potatoes and we've already got our breadcrumbs. So it should be just fine. Whereas if I was making an apple pie, I would probably sprinkle a couple of tablespoons of flour in the bottom of the pie shell before I put the apple pie filling in, which helps to keep it nice and thick. Now this is a big pie, so if you had smaller pie shells, you could easily make two. But this is a nine inch deep dish pie shell, pie plate. So we've got lots of room. It's gonna be so good. There we go. And it's important, very important, that you cool the meat mixture completely before you do this. Because if you put in a warm or hot mixture in an uncooked pie shell, it will get very, very soggy. You don't want soggy pastry. So that part is very, very important. That's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna leave that little bit there for the puppy dog. Okay. The oven is on for 400. It's not quite heated up yet, but it's on for 400. Okay, so now we're gonna take a couple of little escapees there. We're gonna take the other two pie crusts. 
You do the same thing and put it on top. So I'm just going to roll that out. Nice like that. And roll this one out. Now the other thing that you could do, if you wanted to, is take each one of these cut it in quarters and then fill it and fold it over like an apple flip and bake them like individual little tortilla pies. That would be cool too. But we're not doing that today. All right, so let's get this all done a little more and adhere to each other. Oh, there's our oven, she's up to temperature. Make sure your oven is up to temperature before you put it in. Because even though this is a savory pie, it still has pastry, which is baking, of course, and that requires uh, preheating the oven. Sometimes if you're roasting something, you, sh you don't have to preheat your oven, but when you're baking, you really should preheat your oven. Okay, so that's nice and big. And we'll put this back here. Oh, she's heavy. Okay, and we'll roll that on so we don't break up our pastry. Make sure she fits everywhere. Oh, she's gonna be awesome. Okay, now remember, you don't trim your pastry this way. You wanna trim it under your pie plate because it's going to shrink. Now this particular pie pilly has handles somewhere. <laughs> yeah, right there. So I'm just gonna go around the handle and then go back under. And this seems like a lot of work, but you know what? When you put this in front of your company or your family and they, their eyes light up and they really enjoy it, it's so worth it. I love feeding people. I think that's why I like to cook, because I love to feed people. Of course, I also love to eat too, but I love to feed people. Okay, and there's the other handle. And I'm almost done. There we go. Okie dokie. So we'll lay this aside for a minute. Okay, we'll bring this back. Now, at this point, you need to seal the edges. Now, you can either take a fork and press it down gently, um, or you could roll it if you wanted to, like roll it up. Um, or you could do the pinch method, which means you take your pointer finger and your thumb, and then the pointer finger in your other hand, and you just pinch the dough like that, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. And Yep, we're good. Okay, so start anywhere you want. All right, so you take your two fingers and pinch. And then the next one, so where your pointer finger was, now you're gonna put your thumb and put your pointer finger and pinch. And you do that all the way around. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it will be pretty. And doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be made with love. Because this is for your friends, for your family, for yourself, for Christmas. Could be for a bake sale. Oh, I wonder how much you get for this at a bake sale, at church or something like that. Oh, I bet that would be a good seller. Okay, we're almost there. said you could easily do this the day before put it in the fridge there you go see not perfect but she's pretty okay so now it's very very important that we have at least four vents okay so you just take a sharp knife right through the dough and make your four vents because if not it will end up 
venting through the sides and where you've done the nice job of crimping or pressing the fork in and sealing the pastry, it will come unsealed. And then you'll have a mess. Okay, so if you want to, now we can make little decorations. You don't have to, but if you want to. So if you make like a half moon and then another half moon, so it looks like a little, like a little leaf. And then just a few little slits. Not all the way through, just a few little slits. And we'll make another one. And you certainly don't have to do this. This is just if you want to. Or if you have little cutouts, like little little cookie cutter things, you could easily make little cookie cutter symbols as well. That would be cool. Especially like if it's Thanksgiving um, and you have like little turkeys, little miniature turkeys, that would be cool. Or look, at Christmas, you could have little holly, holly leaves. Uh, you could have little Santas. It's all good. You can get as creative or as simple and elegant as you want. Totally up to you. There we go. Okay, so the next step is to take one egg and a little little drop of water. Kind of like the you you know you put milk in your tea. That type of drop of water. And we're going to do an egg wash. You don't have to do this, but this is what makes it nice and shiny and golden and really, really pretty. So we're gonna put this all over the top. And the sides, get it in the little crevices of your crimping. be so pretty and this is also what will stick our little leaves together onto our pie and then you want to put just a little bit on top of that and she's ready to go in the oven so Oven's preheated to 400. I'm going to take the cookie sheet that we had before. And this is an old cookie sheet, as you can tell by the state of it. But I do that on purpose because this is the cookie sheet that can be scrubbed and burnt on and scraped, but I don't use it for cookies. I use it for this kind of stuff. So where's my handles? There they are. So this is going to go in the oven for between 45 and 50, 60 minutes. Um, you want the inside to be hot, but you want your pastry on the outside to be nice and golden and brown. So when that comes out of the oven, we will be back. And then we're also gonna wait for about 20 minutes, half an hour before we cut it. Um, but like any pie, the first slice is always a disaster. So I'll show you the disaster slice when we get back. Hey everybody, she was in there for 55 minutes. We let her sit for half an hour. Now we're gonna cut the ugly piece. <laughs> Cause the first slice is always ugly. Cause it doesn't come out properly. But anyway, let me see if I can get this a little, oh, she's heavy, a little closer to the camera. Is she pretty? I think she's gorgeous. Okie dokie, let's see what we can do. Oh, listen to that crunch. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Ugly piece. <laughs> Not too bad, actually. So, as you can see, 
There's lots of meat, lots of veggies, and it's delicious. So I hope you give it a go. Don't forget, you can do it multiple ways. You can do it part way and then freeze it. You can do it all the way and then freeze it. You can make little individual ones. You can just put it in a, in a, in a casserole dish with puff pastry on top. You don't have to do a whole pie, but I really hope you give it a go. Enjoy. Bye.